RV's gone wild. RV's gone wild. All right, this is RV's gone wild extreme. That's right, it's RV's gone wild spring break edition. And I got a whole lot of extra RVs in this one. I have packed in more material into this than any one prior. This is going to be the biggest one ever. So I'm gonna have to do a lot less talking and a lot more showing. Let's get on with it. Let's start with this one. Alan B sent this to us. It's a 2004 Bluebird. It's an ex Bloodmobile from California. It's got 192,000 miles. It's got a C7 cat engine, five speed Allison auto transmission. It's got a 20,000 watt diesel generator. He doesn't just have one air conditioner. He has four air conditioners. All aluminum polished wheels, but he didn't send me a picture of the outside. Oh, well, it looks great on the inside. Thanks, Alan. We had Anonymous send this to us. Now, I mentioned in my last video that if I was going to build my own RV, it would look horrible. I have no skills in this department. And this RV looks like something that I would build. This is how I imagine a camper would look if I built it. Functional, but not necessarily pretty. I like a little shower on the outside. Next. Brian R. sent us this. It's a rebuild of a 1972 Exide, 38 feet of home-built fun. Looks like a lot of work. Looks great. Good job. Cameron K. sent this one to us. He has no idea what this was. He found it in a hotel in Cannon City, Colorado. He said the front grille looked like a Dodge. Who knows? Looks cool. I've definitely never seen one of these before. James R. found this one in Livermore, California. And this RV comes with an A-frame roof. Good find there, James. Jennifer L. saw this when she was working at a Burger King. She had to go all the way back to her 2017 photos to find this. Thanks for digging it up and sending it our way. That is certainly a funky ride. It almost looks like a set piece on a movie or something. Thanks for sending this in, Joe S. This 2022 Scout, it really shows you that you don't need to have a very big camper shell to have an RV. Kelvin, I like the Okanagan series. I'm actually going to be camping in the Okanagan. And Kelvin, what's the deal with all the gas in the front? First of all, I hope you never rear-end anybody. And second, what apocalypse are you planning for? Yeah, Breaker 1-9, this here's a rubber duck. You got a copy on me, Big Ben? Come Leon W. sent this in to us. It's a 1996 Peterbilt with 379 with living quarters on the actual truck, and then he has a three-horse trailer towing behind him. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a truck driver, and Peterbilt was always my favorite. Speaking of which, comment below if Convoy was one of your favorite movies in the 70s. Hey, just a reminder, if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, click subscribe down below. I got some camping videos coming out soon now that we're heading out into the woods. I got my drone. Make sure to stay tuned and check out some of those other types of videos. I'll link to one right here. Mark C sent this in. It almost made the Ford Truck of the Week. And close to my heart here in Alberta next door, some of my best friends are Albertans. He shows here the camper he made where he actually camps in the winter like everybody does in Alberta. Definitely a cool homemade camper. Fifth wheel, no less. Good job. Melissa and John B. took a photo of this rig. It's got this extra axle. If it's just there to support the extra overhang of the weight, that's definitely a unique one there. Thanks for sending it in. Robert B. sent this one in. Thanks for snapping some photos. This thing is significantly modified. He took these photos at a local Walmart in Salt Lake City. He took notice of the metal roofing and an actual regular doorknob with a key lock on the door. Robbie G spotted this crazy Ford in Arlington, Texas. Looks like its name is Bliss. Blissfully unaware, maybe. Nah, I'm just making fun. I'm sure this person's living their best life. If you've got a cool picture of your RV or some RV you spotted out there, make sure to send it my way. RVingwithjoe at gmail.com. I'll give you a shout out if I use it. Stephanie M. sent this one in. Don't have a lot of context on it. Certainly a nice looking classic rig. Todd P. sent this one in. He actually is touring around in this Trillium trailer and this classic F100 Ford truck. This one almost got the Ford Gold Star Award, but we got a lot of contenders this week. The Trillium is 13 feet long. The truck is from 1969. He also is showing off his 1969 Ford Falcon. Might as well show it here. Thanks a lot, Todd. And thanks for the extra email too. Stay in touch. David R. sent this in. It's a pop-up camper that he sort of rebuilt. Kind of created this slide-out Murphy bed. He framed the walls with two by twos and one and a half inch foam. He said it's super airtight. Thanks to DH for sending this in. You know, my very first RV was a gutted pop-up and I always thought of building it out very similar to this. Good job. Mark L. sent this in to me. It's actually from someone else's page, but I'll just show a short clip of this crazy diamond plated RV right here. I just discovered here at Costco this RV truck camper that is completely made out of diamond plate. This looks like this was all done uh, kind of a homemade type deal, but extremely impressive nonetheless. Check the link below for the full video.
Kelvin H. sent this in. Apparently, this is called the party bus. Wayne W. sent this in. He found this one with a full timer living down in Roca Azul, Mexico. And uh, this is this has this weird two tier setup, but where you can really stand up in the inside of this van. And now it's time for a turducken. You all know the deal. Turduckens, when we got a turkey with a duck inside and a chicken inside that. You cook them all together, tastes great. Not always the best way to set up your RV, but it's certainly entertaining. Let's get on with it. Also, I have an Instagram, RVing with Joe. And if you check out my Instagram, you'll find I'll be putting some photos and videos here that didn't make it into these videos. So there's even more turducken. Bill N. sent this in. He loves these uh, buses where they melded together various parts onto the top. Often VW buses. I like this one. In the name of Turducken, it's actually got poultry on the top. How many RVs actually have poultry on the top? Here's another school bus with a VW bus on top. And it looks like it's got a wood stove pipe poking out of that thing. And then we have this. Um, yeah. Next. Brian J. sent this in. It's a 1978 Ford Econoline camper conversion. I love the look of this old Ford conversion. I mean, this thing's a real party bus if I ever saw one. All that classic interior. This one's going to get the RVing with Joe tip of the hat gold star Ford award for best Ford on this series. There was a lot of Fords in this series, so it was a hard choice. But for whatever reason, I just really like this one. And that's all that counts because I get to choose. Now, I've shown this turducken before. I remember one episode in the past where they melded together a car and a panel van. But here, somebody got even more photos. It started as a Cadillac, and then it became something else. Corvy, who is an RVing with Joe repeat fan, so thanks for sending these in, Cor. Cor saw these all last Saturday in Nelson, Nevada. It's a whole series of different schoolies and various built-out models. Man, I don't know where this Nelson, Nevada is, but it sounds like it's a place I got to go check out. Definitely some funky rigs in here. Thanks again, Cor, for sending all these in. Deb P. sent this in. She called it Parking Lot Turducken. This was spotted in Topeka, Kansas. There's a story there. There has to be. Thanks, Deb. Logan S. sent this in with a little story. His neighbor was leaving for the season. They're both full-time RVers. And he snuck a blow-up doll in the back of his side-by-side -side as a joke. Now, his neighbor drove all the way to his destination, 100 miles. He dropped his trailer. He dropped his fifth wheel. And it was only after all of that that he finally noticed that he'd been driving around with a blow-up doll. Little juvenile, but boys will be boys. It made me laugh. Mark L. spotted this on Reddit. I guess it was in McCalla, Alabama. There's a whole lot of turducking going on here. We've got trucks upon trucks upon trucks. We've got the we got a car on a truck, a truck pulling a truck. This is a Thanksgiving sized turducken here. Now Marty here, he has all kinds of turducken recipes that he fires up. He's got a 2015 Ram 2500. It pulls this Cougar half ton towable fifth wheel, but then he's got a lift on the trailer. He tows behind it a trailer with a 2014 Street Glide Harleys. He says he takes it from Louisiana to West Virginia mountains. He says the Cummins eats those mountains alive. Come out here to the West and try the Rockies. Really put that Cummins to work. So many different doubles here. Ron H. sent this in. In one of the early episodes, I posted a similar one to this, where they actually have the boat mounted upright. I'm guessing it slides out the back. It's really interesting to see how they actually undock this boat. Roy K. spotted this one in East Texas. He said that it was towing a boat on the trailer. I'm not sure if it's towing a boat on the RV itself or if there's another trailer behind there. Anyway, that's a wild looking rig. Thanks for the support, Roy. And Todd R. sent in these two duckins. You might have remembered Todd R. from my last video with his big old beefy rig rolling down the road. Thanks for sending in these two duckins. Brian J. is back. He showed us some of these pics. He actually got to drive this butte. They don't make RVs like that anymore. Harry, one of our RVing with Joe's super fans, sent in even more pics. He wrote that there's two famous RV makers that rarely make fifth wheel campers. And the 69 Chinook and the 1970 Airstream, 1980s Airstream, and a 1989 Airstream with a non-metal frame. It was very rare to see fifth wheels made from these manufacturers. Harry wanted to break down the preconceptions of what people thought an Airstream or Chinook actually looked like. Thanks again, Harry. Todd P. liked the little bugger VW bug we featured in a few episodes ago. 
He also wanted to point out that there's Australian and European factory built versions of the VW bus. And here we've got an old Travco. There's another one that Wayne spotted down in Mexico, I think, in a previous video. I think somebody called out the Travco as being one of the RVs that was cut out and put on top of a semi big rig. Not too familiar with the model, but it seemed to have a following. And whoo, that is it. That was a lot of videos. I tried to talk a little less, tried to talk a little faster, tried to get through as many as I could. I hope everyone's had a great long Easter vacation weekend, great spring break. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out some of my camping videos. I got a bunch of different videos coming out. I was checking out a new cooler and a new power station recently, so I did a review on those. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so you can see all these videos when they come out.